Hey everyone, Steve here. And today I'm going to talk about an incredibly powerful set of updates that have started in 2412 and they were expanded on in 2506 for some of the surfacing functions, the most important surfacing functions like through curves, through curve mesh, studio surface, and that type of thing. So this new toggle inside of these tools really fixes some problems and makes things a lot better. Now, before I get into showing you, if you would please subscribe to the channel if you're not already and drop a comment down below. It really helps me out a lot. And if you would like the video, if you've learned something. So greatly appreciate that. Now, when I go into, we'll start out with through curve mesh. The toggle I'm talking about is down at the bottom. It's called Split Output Along Boundary Curves. I'm not going to say you have to use it, with my big finger in the camera. I'm not going to say you have to, but I'm going to say you most likely should. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to start out with a default, standard, what we're all used to seeing. Let me go into Through Curves. What we're all used to seeing, you can see right over here as well. And that's a alignment by parameter with preserved shape. We've all used this a million times. So we have a certain level of predictability that we have with that function. Start out with my feature curves. Section one, section two, pick my faces, pick my faces. I want to use isoparametric if I do not. If I use not specified, you'll notice it gets kind of weird. This toggle will actually clean up that weirdness a little bit. You can see a difference. But I definitely want to use either isoparametric or perpendicular in this case. Now, I'm going to leave this turned off for now. I'm going to select OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to analyze the boundary conditions across these faces. So when I come into surface continuity, say body faces, pick them. Notice there is discontinuities across those boundaries. And I'm sure this is something that everybody that's made more than a handful of surfaces has run across. So what we end up doing is we end up changing the type to alignment or we build individual slabs and put everything in, etc., etc. Bit of extra work, but it's very possible, not too difficult to smooth these things out. But we've always sat here and went, yeah, I really want that to be better. I know I have. So I'm just going to select OK. So we know that there's a tangent break here. When I double click on that surface and I turn this on, and it happens pretty much instantly, those disappear. What's happening is NX is recognizing, truly recognizing the split between face to face and it's imposing the continuity that the section has on that surface as it meshes all the way through. It's made this a profoundly better surface. In the old days I would have to blend this out separately. A lot of times I just delete the face and put in a new patch my own self or draw on the curves or go to the corners and work around it. And NX would do it. Does a nice job. It's a little bit of extra work, not too much, but it was extra work. And now that's been resolved. It's been cleaned up. The most interesting thing about this is, let me cancel. Historically, what we would do, right, we would go into the surface and go, ugh, I don't want that. So we would change this from parameter to, let's say, arc length. And all of those edges magically disappear because all those edges magically disappear. It smooths everything out. Now, if I turn this on with arc length, notice those edges come back. Quite frankly, the surface is a bit more complex when I use arc length. So if I'm able to, I always use by parameter. Now this surface is going to naturally be more complex, period, because this is a line and an arc and a line and an arc and a line. These are splines. 
but these are lines and arcs. And if you've seen some of my older content on what lines and arcs do to NURBS surfaces, you'll understand why that surface is more complex. And actually, you know what I'll do is I'll leave a link to one of the videos in the description down below. So if you want to have a look at those videos, or that video, there's a few of them, that define and describe what's going on. So if you want to make the surface even simpler, and what I'll do is I'll just display those complexities. Not terribly complex, it's not horrible by any means. But if I go in and use, like in this case, I switch this over to parameter, preserve shape, and split, you see a much simpler, cleaner surface. And as I said, if these were splines and bridges and things of that nature, I would have even a much simpler, cleaner surface on top of that. So this little toggle has profoundly changed the way your surfaces get created. Okay. And I mean in a big way. And I'm very excited for it because now this, I would consider this good. I wouldn't have to do a rebuild on that little segment. I would just go with it. Now, if for some reason I did need a true radius value on that surface, like this is a radius that I put in on the sketch, I would typically build to the theoreticals, right? The intersection, I should say. And um, that theoretical intersection would then be piped. And then I would run a surface through there or a face blend or something with the true radius value that I'm looking for. So typically I don't do a lot of this type of thing with arcs just because a lot of times I need that actual radius value. But if I don't, then this just made things a lot easier, a lot less work. The nice thing about that option, you'll note it is here as well and through Curve Mesh. So if I turn on those cross strings and do my through Curve Mesh, again, historically, what would end up happening, feature curve one, feature curve two for primaries, cross curve number one, cross curve number two, this is what I would historically get. I'd get this big, gigantic, heavy surface with the edges washed out. But now, with my through curve mesh, I can turn that guy on. And I get something still big and heavy. But I have those lovely little divisions. And I'm a big fan of having these on the surface because I oftentimes want to know where that tangency is at where the beginning of a transition occurs, because oftentimes I need to build something off of it, and I'm not guessing anymore, or I don't have to put in an extra curve, or whatever that may be. Now, if I take a look at Studio Surface, you'll see it's down there as well. If I take a look at Ruled, you'll see it down there as well. If I look at Swept, for example, Okay, you'll notice I have the split output along guide. I do talk about this when I lecture about the swept feature, and I oftentimes like to turn that on. I personally like to see those boundaries. Now, there are some instances where you don't want them. I get it. It makes offsetting easier sometimes, or you have less faces to contend with. But generally speaking, this type of math lends itself well to not having weird radius changes occur at those boundaries because the system is not trying to smooth anything out. And the way the underlying algorithm works nowadays is a lot better than it used to. They've done a lot of work cleaning it up, smartening it up, so you don't really get those errors and issues as you, you may have at one point. But, you know, old habits and old dogs like myself die hard, so I still use certain methods based on me being old and doing this for a long time. So, again, through curves, through curve mesh, studio surface, and of course, 
ruled. Now, one more final check just to show you what it looks like. Let me turn off the through curve mesh. Let me go to through curves. Let me pick my faces. Select OK. Let me pick this guy and turn those off. Notice what's going on across that boundary. And if I double click on that and then turn this off, notice what happens to that boundary and then those little porcupines indicating that I have an issue on that surface reappear. Okay, you can see there it's a bit wonky. And then once again, turn that on and now it's not a bit wonky, it's clean. So that new option, that split output along boundary curves, really should be something you turn on and forget to turn it off. The only reason why you might turn it off, or you don't even really have to turn it off, but maybe you did want to do something with your alignment set to arc length and you want to smooth everything out and get rid of the edges, that may be an option or a parameter and do the same thing, get rid of all the edges. But that would really be the only reason why to turn it off. Anyway, I hope you learned something. Hope you liked the video and enjoyed it. And again, please, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and I hope to hear from you. See you soon.